Hello, uh, so in the previous video we, we showed um, how Alice and Bob they can establish uh, the um, secure connection by exchanging their public keys and basically how they can authenticate each other to each other, right? So now we are ready to, to basically start discussing a bit more on, about basic authentication techniques. So there are many protocols for realizing authentication and authenticated key establishment. Nevertheless, the basic ideas behind the good ones are not so diverse. Uh, so in this video, we shall give the constructions that have been documented as international standards. Um, and we will also give some bad ones and explain why they are bad. Uh, to this end, we'll study standard mechanisms for establishing message freshness and principal liveness. Uh, we will talk about mutual versus unilateral authentication and we will also uh, touch upon authentication involving a TTP, a trusted third party. <coughs> right, so let's talk first of all about um, message freshness and principles lightness. So in a challenge response mechanism, one party basically sends a challenge and the second one sends a response in a pre-agreed manner that indicates freshness, right? So Alice, for example, is generating a challenge uh, she's sending this challenge to Bob and then Bob, he needs to reply back to that challenge based on a pre-agreed um, manner that has been, let's say, uh, you know, in, this, in the protocol specification, right? And this will indicate freshness. So let's see an example. One, one way to do this is by using nonces. So as we said in one of the previous videos, a nonce basically is just a random number, right? Um, Anyway, a random token. So Bob basically contacts Alice. Uh, Bob generates a, a random NB, okay, and a random nonce NB, and, and he sends that uh, this to Alice, right? Upon reception, Alice replies back to Bob by sending him, okay, this very same nonce that uh, she received, uh, as well as a message M that she wished to send to Bob, and all of that message is all of this is encrypted with a key KAB that is shared between Alice and Bob. Now, this is just a simple example, right? We assume that there is a protocol with these specifications and that's how it works. Now, upon reception, what will Bob do? Basically, Bob knows that he's, uh, he received the message from Alice. So basically, he uses KAB, the symmetric key that he has shared with Alice to decrypt the ciphertext and it will accept the message as valid, as fresh, if and only if um, in that message, uh, the nonce and B that he sent initially to Alice on step one is there, right? If Bob doesn't see and B and he sees a different number, then basically he should drop the connection because, um, you know, he knows that the message probably is not fresh or anyhow, something is going wrong. Good, so this is uh, problematic though for the, for, for, for the following reasons. So Bob's identity is missing in the second message, right? So encryption is not the right service. So if the encryption algorithm does not provide a data integrity service, then the specified mechanism is a dangerous one. And this comes to bring us to, to something that I mentioned in one of the first lectures, probably the first one, that if you think cryptography can solve all of your security problems, then you don't understand the problems and you're trying to solve and you don't understand cryptography, right? So just, just encrypting um, our messages doesn't doesn't solve our issues, right? So here we don't have integrity. Um, we don't have any any mechanism that will uh, ensure the integrity of the exchange messages, right? So Bob cannot verify the integrity of the messages. Good. So <clears throat> and this brings us to um, Mac, which is known as message authentication code. So suppose two parties. Um, who again share a secret key, K, K, um, Alice and Bob, wish to ensure that the data transmitted between them um, has not been tampered with. So they can use, let's say, a secret key and the keyed algorithm to produce what we call a tag or a MAC, um, which, is, which will be basically sent along with the data, right? So a MAC algorithm can be seen as a keyed hash function, let's say, right? So it's a keyed hash function, takes as input the symmetric key, um, a message and outputs what we call a tag or a MAC. Note that um, 
we do not assume that the message is secret. Okay, this is the more or less the same like what we described in the previous lectures with signatures and and, and, and hashes and cryptographic hash functions. Um, however, with signature was a bit different. But anyway, so keep in mind that we do not assume when we're using uh, Mac um, that the message is secret. Basically, we are trying to protect data integrity and not confidentiality, right? So this is a big difference. So we try to protect the integrity and not the confidentiality of the message. So producing a tag or a Mac on its own, it's not enough. So we need, um, let's say, a way to verify that it was produced by the correct key, right? Hence, we define the Mac scheme as a pair of keyed public algorithms, sign and verify, right? So obviously, once you see this, um, I guess that automatically it brings you to, it comes to your mind the digital signature schemes, right? In the digital signature scheme, we had a sign and a verify algorithm. So here we have the same. So we have a MAC sign algorithm and a MAC verify algorithm. Um, so let's see how 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 this works right so alice wishes to send that message um, an integrity protected message to bob right so basically alice generates the message m she gives that as input to the max sign algorithm along with the secret key k that she has in some magical way already shared with bob right now um by doing this and running the sign algorithm this will output what we call a tag Tough or a Mac or a Mac of that message, right? And this will be sent basically to Bob along with the message, right? So Alice contacts Bob by sending him the generated tag along with the message M. And that tag has been generated based on the message M and a secret K key K that Alice has been share, has shared with Bob. Uh, Good. Now, upon reception, Bob basically will use the verification algorithm to verify the integrity of the message. And to do so, he will give us input to the verify algorithm, the message M, the tag, as well as the same key that Alice um, used to generate the tag. And this will output basically a bit, exactly, exactly like what we had in the digital signatures. A bit zero if the verification fails, one if the verification is successful. Um, now, the tag is such that when we pass it, as well as the original message to the verification algorithm, then we will get the bid, which will signal the, the success or failed report. Now, the idea is that it should be hard for the adversary, for Eve, to get such a valid response unless the tag has been obtained from the MAC algorithm using the same key K, right? In other words, Eve cannot produce this result unless she has basically access to the secret key K that Alice and Bob um, sharing. Good, so I guess you see the similarities with digital signatures, at least in a high level. Now let's see um, a semi-formal definition. So a MAC basically is defined over KMT, um, which is the key space, the method space, and the tag space, and is a pair of algorithms S and V, S for sign, V for verification, for verifying. So S takes as input K and M and outputs a tag T in the tag space, capital T, while V takes as input the same secret key K, the message M, the tag that was generated earlier, and outputs 0 or 1, true or false. Um, good. Now, as you can see from these definitions, basically, there is a great deal of similarity between MAX and digital signature. So let's see kind of uh, intuitively what the recipient Bob wishes to obtain from the bit um, returned by the MAC verification algorithm when applied to a message and tag that is sent uh, from Alice. So basically, there are two main properties. So Bob, basically, he can um, obtain the message integrity, which means that he can be sure that the message has not been altered, altered in transit. And at the same time, he can obtain the message origin, which means that he can be sure that the message was sent by Alice because he knows that that key, that specific key K uh, is known only to Alice and Bob, right? So since he is not the one 
who send the message because he's the recipient of the message he can be sure that uh, the sender was Alex right now the main difference with digital signatures because these two properties are obtained by digital signatures as well right so the main difference is that digital signatures they also provide the property of non-repudiation um, good um, now the other difference is that Macs are extremely efficient okay so you can generate and verify a Mac um, very very fast good so let's talk now about message freshness and principal liveness again right so we, we, we showed a simple example earlier um, and we said why it's not it wasn't a good one so let's try to fix this so the really correct way is to use a Mac or a signature scheme right so this has been standardized as ISO 2 pass unilateral authentication protocol so let's see how it works so we've got basically two different flavors one comes by by using the Mac um, scheme that we described earlier and the other one by using the traditional digital signature schemes you'll see that basically the ideas are more or less the same so let's see how we can do it by using a Mac so we have Alice and Bob so Bob generates a nonce a random nonce NB and he sends that to Alice upon reception Alice basically she generates a message M and then she calculates the Mac on that message M Bob's identity along with Bob's nonce the nonce that was sent by Bob earlier upon reception what will Bob do basically he gets the message M he knows that he's communicating with Alice so he knows that this Mac has been uh, this tag basically has been generated by using KAB the key that Bob um, is sharing with Alice so he can verify that tag right by using the same key and the input um, M Bob and NB now he verifies the Mac and if everything goes well then uh, the protocol is successful now let's see how we can do this this using a signature scheme so it's as I said more or less the same so again Bob generates a random nonce NB uh, he sends that uh, to Alice and then Alice she replies back to Bob by sending okay the uh, another nonce and a right a fresh nonce that uh, Alice generated randomly the nonce and B that Bob generated in step one Bob's identity a message M that Alice wishes to send to Bob and all of these are encrypted with Alice's secret key which means that are basically digitally signed um, with Alice's secret key so upon reception Bob basically verified the signature by using Alice's public key and if the verification is successful then the protocol uh, goes on so this is the ISO 2 pass unilateral authentication protocol two flavors Mac and signature scheme the Mac one the Mac based one uh, is, is much more efficient but in any case both of them they achieve more or less the same um, result now Alice's free inclusion of message M is very important okay and this is a measure to prevent an exploit from Bob where he gets to um, where he gets to sign things that he's, he, 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 he shouldn't now uh, message freshness and principal liveness so let's move on on, on the same direction so using timestamps uh, Alice adds the current time to her message composition resulting in ISO one pass unilateral authentication protocol so again we've got two flavors using a Mac and using signature so using a Mac Alice first generates a message M um, calculates uh, the current time of her machine uh, TA the timestamp and she calculates a mark that takes as input the message M, Bob's identity, the current time TA, as well as the key KAB that she is sharing with Bob. Now, upon reception, Bob basically he can immediately verify uh, the tag that received. He has access to the message M because it's freely added. Um, in the in the message that is sent um, from Alice uh, he has access to KAB and their clocks are synchronized and also he knows his ID Bob so basically he can verify the mark and then by using digital signature then Alice basically she contacts Bob by sending 
the timestamp, a message, and all of this along with Bob's identity signed with her secret key. So upon reception, Bob verifies the signature by using Alice's public key and he can be sure about the correctness of the protocol. Now the timestamp mechanism avoid the need for interaction. As you may have already noticed, um, in the previous, um, in the two pass unilateral authentication, we had Alice and Bob, they had to exchange two messages. While in that case here, in this case, uh, they only exchange one message, right? So, so we avoid the need for interaction. This is suitable for um, applications that involve uh, no interaction, such as uh, emails. Uh, the disadvantage is that synchronized clocks are required and must be maintained securely. And sometimes this might be a bit tough. Now, instead of timestamps, uh, a counter can be maintained at both ends, updated after each interaction, which means that, you know, I send you a message. Uh, we've got a timer that starts now saying, OK, message one, you reply to me or I send you another message. Then this counter goes from M1 to M2 and so on and so forth. Now, the problem here is that you need to maintain a database with all of the exchange counters, and this can lead to what we call a denial of service attack since the protocol becomes stateful. Anyway, as I mentioned in one of the previous videos, DOS attacks is not part of that course. Um, yeah. So let's move on to mutual authentication. So in mutual authentication, both communicating parties are authenticated to each other. So ISO has standardized the number of mechanisms for mutual authentication. A signature-based scheme is ISO public key three-pass mutual authentication protocol. Now, one might consider that mutual authentication is simply twice the unilateral authentication. It is not, and even ISO got it wrong the first time. So let's see how three-pass protocol uh, works. So we've got Alice and Bob again. The same thing, Bob generates a random nun, send B, and he sends that to Alice. Upon reception, Alice generates her own random nuns, NA, and contacts Bob by sending him the two nuns, NA and B, Bob's identity in clear text, and all of this information signed with her secret key. Upon reception, basically Bob verified the signature and he replies back to Alice by saying, OK, Alice. Um, here are the two nuances, here is your identity, and here is a signature on all of this with my secret key, so that I can prove to you that, um, you know, I'm actually Bob. So here, ESK of A should be ESK of B, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's how basically then um, eyes of public three past mutual authentication protocol works, and with this, I think we conclude uh, the description of basic standardized authentication mechanism. I, I, I believe that, you know, um, these are pretty much um, similar to the protocol that we have described till now, at least in, in the previous uh, videos on lecture four and five. Good. Uh, then in the next videos, video, we will talk about um, several attacking techniques that Eve can follow. Thanks a lot.